News for you, awesome websites without code. Hey, what's up, users? John with Mies for You here to help you build awesome websites without code. And in this video tutorial, we're going to have a bit of fun with Adobe Muse, and we're going to cover a few topics that I think you'll find useful when working with Adobe Muse. So we're going to recreate this home page here, and one of the first things we see here is this text. Um, this word says Alexana, and we're going to be using the Alexana font to to add this text here. So we're going to download a font from a Behance page and we're going to convert it to a web font using Font Squirrel. So I highly recommend using web fonts over system fonts as search engines can read the text if it's a web font. If it's a system font, it's just text within an image and search engines cannot read the text within an image. So we're going to download the font and then convert the font to a web font. Um, here we're just using a background image from graphicburger.com. And uh, we're also gonna fill this text here with an image to add a bit more styling and a bit more texture to the text. So we're gonna use the image text widget for, for this here. And we're also gonna add a border around the entire page and we're gonna use the browser border widget to add the border. So the image text widget and the browser border widget can be found at museforyoushop.com. Okay, so I have a few different variations of this home page. So if we click on page two, we see we have a darker border here. Uh, page three, I've changed the word to delish uh, because the website kind of has images of fruit. Um, so I thought the word delish was fitting here just to see how it looked. And then the fourth variation is the same thing, but with a darker border. All right, so let's go ahead and get started uh, creating this page. So the first thing we're gonna do is download the Alexana font from this Behance page. And I'll leave a link to this in the description area below. So I've already downloaded it. So I'll go to my finder. And here I have the Alexana font. So on Mac, you can just double click to unzip. On Windows, I think you can right click and select extract all or double click as well. So here I have the Alexana font. And we see here we have the .ttf file. So the first thing you want to do when you download the file, um, also to download it, you just scroll down the page and just click on download. Here it tells you more about the font. It's a really unique font. Um, the dot changes for lowercase and uppercase letters, so it can be really useful when styling your text. Okay, so when you download it, you get the zip file, then you extract the zip file, and then we have the .ttf. So the first thing you wanna do is double click on the .ttf to install onto your computer. So I'll go ahead and double click, and here we see it says install font. You wanna go ahead and click on install font. I've already done this, so I'm not gonna go ahead and do it again, but you can go ahead and install. So once it's installed, we wanna convert it to a web font. So to do that, we're gonna to go to fontsquirrel.com. So just, yeah, fontsquirrel.com. And then here you wanna click on generator. So I'll click generator. And here we can see it says basic, optimal, and expert. We wanna go ahead and click on expert. And then here we see it says dot, or we have the, the font formats. We have WFF, WFF2. You'll also want to check EOT Lite and SVG. So to install um, a font as a web font in Adobe Muse, you need a .WFF, a .EOT, and a .SVG. So that's all we have to do there. Um, WFF2 is okay as well, so you can leave that checked. Um, so now we want to click, hold, and drag, and place the font into this section. So I'll go into my finder. I'll click, hold, and drag, alexana.ttf. Place it right in there. Um, you can also click upload fonts and find the font on your computer. Then I'll scroll down and here we says in the here where it says agreement, it says yes, the fonts I'm uploading are legally el eligible for web embedding. So I'll go ahead and click yes. You want to make sure that's the case with the font you're using as well. And then you can click on download your kit and it will download onto your computer. So here I'll go back into my finder. I've already done this process. So once you download it, it'll say web font kit with a few numbers after it. So I'll go ahead and double click, and here we have the folder. So within the folder, we see we have a .eot, a .svg, and a .wff. So you need these three files to install it as a web font into Adobe Muse. So I'll go into Muse, and let's go ahead and create a new page. So I'll go to File, New Site, and I'll click OK. All right, and I'll double click on the home page. So here I have a blank page. So the first thing I wanna do is 
add the files for the web font. So I'll go to File, Add Remove Web Fonts. And here we see we have a Typekit tab, an Edge Web Fonts tab, and a Self Hosted tab. You want to click on Self Hosted and then click on Add Fonts. So here we have the Add, the add Self Hosted Web Fonts dialog box. We see it says drag and drop a .wff, a .eot, and a .svg. So here I want to go to my finder and I want to click, hold, and drag the .eot, .svg, and the .woff. Yeah, so I'll click, hold, and drag, place into Adobe Muse, and here it says three web font files were found. And then here it says by clicking continue, I affirm I have properly licensed the above, the above fonts for website use. Again, you want to make sure that's the case with the font you're using. Then I'll click continue, and here we see it has a green check mark that says Alexana regular. So this lets, this lets us know that the font was installed as a web font. If there's a red X or it says it, was, it wasn't installed, um, this is usually because you have to install the font onto your computer first. Okay, so there we go, all set. And I'll go ahead and click cancel because I've already done this, but you can go ahead and click okay. All right, so now we can start building the site. So the first thing I wanna do is add the background image. And the background image was from graphicburger.com and I'll leave a link in the description area below. So here it is, it's this pic jumbo first studio shots freebie. Um, and here we just have a few high quality images of food. So they're really nice images. Um, and here, this is the image I used. It's an image of a watermelon here. So I'll go ahead into uh, Muse and actually I'll go to my finder. And here I have the zip file that I've downloaded. So you just wanna double click to unzip and then I'll double click into the folder. So here I have all the images, looks good. So in Adobe Muse to add a background image, you just click anywhere outside of the page, then up here in the upper control bar, click browser fill, and then click add image. So here I have the images, so I'll go ahead and select this image here of the watermelon and the yellow background. Okay, and then for fitting, I'll say scale to fill, and I'll position in the center, and I'll uncheck scrolling. Um, if scrolling is checked and the page has more height, the background image will stretch to the height of the page and it could get distorted. So I like to uncheck scrolling so it just fits within the browser and stays, stays fixed within the browser and doesn't stretch or get distorted if the page has more height. Okay, um, and you can also resize the browser to smaller and that image will just scale and fit within the browser. All right, so let's preview. I'll go to File, Preview Page, and Browser. And there we have the image. If I scale it or resize the browser, the image stays uh, fixed within the browser and still looks good. All right, so now let's go ahead and add the, the text. So I'll go into the Library panel here to the right. And if you don't see the Library panel, you can go to Window and click on Library. And here in the Library panel, I'll type in uh, Image Text. And here we have the image text widget. So here I'll click, hold, and drag, place into Adobe Muse, and there we have it. So at first it's just blank because we haven't added an image or text to the widget. So here in the widget options, I'll click on add file, and I'll select this image here, this darker image with a few fruits there. All right, so there we have the text. So now I'll go into the text options, and for the enter text, I'll say Alexana. And for the font size, I'll say seven. Uh, the font size is in M's, 1M equals 16 pixels. Okay, and I didn't add any uppercase letters because here in the text transform option, I'll just say uppercase. All right, looks good. So now to change the font type for this text, I'll just select the widget, go to the text option here in the upper control bar, and I'll type in Alexana. So here we can see we have the Alexana font that we installed. Um, it's in my recently used fonts. It's also a web font. And here we can see it's a system. It's placed as a system font as well. You don't want to use the system font. You either want to use the web font, or if you've recently used it, um, use the recently used fonts. So I'll go ahead and select the Alexana font here. All right. So there we have it. Um, looks good. So now I'm going to stretch this widget container to the browser width so that um, it has more space. If the browser resizes, the the text won't go underneath each other. So I'll select the widget. In the resize option, I'll say stretch to browser width. All right, looks good. So it goes across the page. Now I'll open the widget options. We can see it gets cut off at the top. So I'll go to the text option here. And in the light line height or letting, I'll say 1.5 uh, to add a bit more spacing to the bottom and the top of the, te the text. All right, looks good. And I'll just 
make the widget container a bit smaller and perfect so now I'll go ahead and preview and it looks good we have Alexana we have the background there so now I'll add the browser border widget to add a border around the page so I'll go to the library panel and here I'll type in browser border and I'll bring in the browser border all sides with image so here I'll click hold and drag place into Adobe Muse I'll open the widget options and here we can see it says, it says select an image so I'll click add file and I'll select this kind of lighter image here with the yellow and you can also change the border width here I'll leave it at 15 pixels and just like that we have the browser border and there we have the page looks good all right so now I'll just do a few variations um, I'll also add the font smoother to make sure that this font is really smooth in here. So I'll go ahead in the library panel, I'll type in font smoother. And there we go. And also the font smoother only works with web fonts. So it's always uh, a good idea to use web fonts uh, in general. They're just better for, for the web. All right, so here we go. And I'll preview. All right, looks good. So now I'll just yeah work with the text a bit and change the border. So I'll go back into the widget options and I'll go into the image text widget and for the text I'll change it to delish looks good and for the browser border um, I'll select a darker image here just to see how that looks alright and I'll preview one more time alright looks good I kinda like the darker uh, image here uh, gives a bit more contrast to the page uh, so the last thing we'll do here is add the social media icons so I'll go into my finder I, I have a few social media icons and here I'll select them, I'll click, hold, and drag, place into Muse, just like that. Select them, and I'll place them here to the right. I'll also select footer, so they can go in the footer section as well. And I'll place them a bit lower, and I'll align them to each other here. So let me just, there we go. All right, there we go, looks good. Okay, perfect. All right, so there we have it. And I also wanna make these icons black. So because they're PNG images, uh, we can use the glow effect in Adobe Muse to change these icons to a black color. So I'll select the icons, I'll go to the effects panel, I'll click on glow, and I'll select glow here, and for the color, I'll select the black, and for the opacity, I'll say 100%, and for the blur, I'll say uh, 250. Uh, 250 is the max you can set for blur so if you enter a number higher than 250 it'll just default to 250 and then I want to go ahead and click on inner glow so there we have it the icons are now black so if I uncheck inner glow we can see they're white but if I check inner glow um, they're black so these are the settings here um, the color is black opacity 100% blur 250 and inner glow selected so just like that you can change the colors uh, or the color of a PNG image so now with these icons, I want to place them in the lower right-hand corner of the browser. So I'll select them all. And then in the upper control bar, we have the pin option. So you can pin to the upper left, uh, upper middle, upper right, lower left, lower middle, or lower right of the browser. So I'll click on the lower right. So now these icons are pinned to the lower right of the browser. So I also want to make sure that they're not too close to the right side or the bottom because we know we have that 15 pixel browser border uh, to the page. All right, so there we go, and I'll preview in the browser, and it looks good. The icons look good there. We have the lish, we have the browser border, perfect. So it's a really simple home page, but I think it's a nice effect um, if you want the user just to see a really clean home page before the, they enter the site, or you could have you know add more to the page. They can scroll down. Uh, you could use the responsive cover image widget so that when they scroll down, um, the image goes up and the rest of the site is below. Uh, the cover image here. Uh, but yeah, I like the effect. I like the Alexana font. It's a really uh, interesting font. And also converting it to a web font is, is a good thing to know in Adobe Muse. So if you have your own font that you want to use in Adobe Muse, you can convert it into a web font using Font Squirrel. So uh, that's it for this video tutorial. The image text widget and the browser border widget can be found at museforyoushop.com. And here you can click subscribe today. And here you can click subscribe now to get access to all widgets and any new widgets I come out with for $39 a year. The image text widget is right here. Here you can click add to cart to purchase individually. Or again, you can click subscribe to get access to all widgets and any new widgets I come out with for $39 a year. And then we have the browser border widget, which is right here. 
So here we have the browser border widget and the font smoother widget is also on the widget page. Uh, so that's it for this video tutorial. Again, I do this to help you build awesome websites without code. If you like this video tutorial, you can subscribe below. Also in the show more section below are links to other resources and links to meesforyoushop.com. So again, thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next video tutorial. Thank you. News for you, awesome websites without code.